as you heard from his intro, my guest today on the Paracade podcast is a former NRL player with the North Queensland Cowboys, but also played at the club that I love, the Parramatta Eels. And he's joined me today. Welcome to the Paracade podcast, Mr. Shane Muspratt. Thanks, Troy. No worries. Thank you very much for joining me. Now, uh, going back in the early days as a kid, was rugby league always on the radar, something that you always enjoyed doing in, in North Queensland? Uh, no, not initially, <laughs> mate. It's um, growing up in a small community of uh, 5,000 in the Burdekin, Um Sort of tried everything. So initially it was soccer and uh, BMX. We were pretty good little okay. BMX riders early in, in that sort of period. My sisters were ended up getting world world plates okay. um, when they were like eight. Uh, basketball was my big sport and didn't start playing footy till I was 12. Okay. Um, growing up then, who was your, who was your footy team growing up then? Uh, well, the, I'm a Queenslander, so you, the the Broncos were the, the the team prior to the Cowboys coming in. But yep. uh, the North Sydney Bears had a bit of a my, my dad um, had some close friends at their leagues club way back in the day, and um, the Burdick and Foley Shield side way back used to be the Burdick and Bears. So okay. they um, sort of had a very similar strip and. So North Sydney was, uh, yeah, a bit of a soft spot as well. Who were your sort of favourite players, uh, either from the North Sydney Bears or in the rugby league in general? Oh, mate, I, I think through that period was Wally Lewis. You know, you um, sort of sat watching State of Origin with Dad as a young kid and um, I've got two younger sisters the, none of the females in the house were allowed in the lounge room because they talked too much <laughs> and, on, on origin night. And it was just dad and I and everyone else has got to shut up. And um, and that's when Wally probably produced his best footy. So <clears throat> any kid through that era always, you know, likes Wally. And um, but that was me basketball stuff. But my hero through that era was Larry Bird, actually. Okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so is the Boston Celtics your team in the That's my team, yeah. mate? Yeah, yeah. He, he give uh, give hope to a young white kid that couldn't jump. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, nah, definitely couldn't really get into the basketball myself, but uh, love the rugby league. Um, you said you started at twelve. There was then something rugby league that you wanted to take on and uh, maybe continue on and and. Do as a sort of no, career? No, career? it wasn't really. Basketball, as I said, for me, if they ever overlapped through my early teens, uh, I always played basketball, um, played a few rep carnivals, made a um, couple of state teams as I got a bit older. And then it wasn't really until Super League. Um, okay. yeah. At the end of a, a basketball national sort of tournament, um, that Literally that next year, Super League sort of popped its head. All the small communities used to have um, those little development programs, you know, tied to the club. And they sort of went around to all the Ingham and the Burdekin and, and Tully and all that and invited a few kids that they thought, you know, might wanted to, uh, that might be a chance to trial and literally uh, trialed and playing footy ever since. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, so from one of those carnivals, that's how you made it to the North Queensland Cowboys? Through yeah, the like it, it wasn't even a carnival. It was more around Super League. Let's go and invite a stack of North Queensland kids that, um, you know, each club would sort of put up. So yeah. I know the Brewsters sort of put um, myself and about four or five blokes up that um, were potential. And, yeah, mate, that, that year, that first year Super League didn't occur. So we had an under-17 side that most of us was 16 and 15 and <clears throat> we played in the under-19 Towns Rugby League comp, um, which we won that year. I played with Scotty Prince, was in that okay. team. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, a few guys that went on to play NRL, Grant Rival. Um, so, yeah, mate, it was a – Super League has it, had its ups and downs. Well, you guys are ARL, obviously, but for kids – 
in general because the, the, the concept was always supposed to be if the Broncos went and played Perth or New Zealand, it was supposed to be under 17s, under 19s, reserve grade and A grade. Yeah. So from a fan's point of view, um, a sponsor's point of view, mate, you're getting a, a full day of rugby league, which was so good for the game. But yeah. um, obviously it didn't happen that first year. The next year it happened, we were under 19s. And, yeah, mate, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a shame because – the under nineteen team when I was under seventeen, and and a stack of that group went on and played. You know Johnny Doyle, Butsy, Aaron Ketchell. Man, there's that group was they were grown men. But I, I wish that team really did get to play back in that day together because they would have they would have been very very hard to stop. Um, yeah, I, I suppose. <laughs> I probably haven't heard the Super League being talked about like in that way. Um, we've all heard that it benefited players that are that were already playing, obviously with the amounts of money going around, but um, and the broadcasters as well getting subscriptions and stuff like that. But um, what you've just said there, it's a very interesting tale that it was more sort of great for the kids at that time. Um, coming through into grades. But particularly in North Queensland, I, I didn't really um, appreciate the junior space until I got to para. But, you know, you've got Jersey flag and, and like, a, a kids are, you know, you, you, I suppose your club region of Parramatta, you play club, but your rep sides are Parramatta Eels. Yeah. Whereas yeah. you never really had that in North Queensland. You, you like, Burdekin... We played against Proserpine and Collinsville and, and in that area. And then our rep side was um, Burdick and Sunday. And then through that, you could make the North Queensland side. But it was never the Cowboys, you know. It was the North Queensland Marlins, I think, back okay. then. Yeah. So it wasn't until I got power to see how, I suppose, you know, how ingrained it is for kids that, you know, as 14, 15-year-olds, that's the dream. Yeah. Whereas for me, if if – Oh, if Super League didn't pop its head, I don't. I would still be. I don't think I would have been playing NRL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, as I said, that's a another sort of interesting sort of tale from the Super League days as to yeah. um, another side. Don't worry. I, I wish I was five years older and I'd played a few NRL games when I was negotiating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, nah, yeah, I bet. We, I bet. We, we were four years from the money, but. Um, in regards to opportunity, and that was the biggest thing. As I said, there's probably a stack of kids that might never have made, you know, just the system rather yeah. than, you know, there wasn't a lot that went on to play NRL through, I know we had under 17s, there was a, a handful, but, you know, it, it it's a, the appreciation I don't think the fans know as much how actually hard it is, the sacrifice of players and that sort of stuff. Yeah, to actually play NRL, it's um because you you're not one of twenty really, you're one of a hundred in a region. <laughs> you know, yeah. if you just make that last twenty, you just you're sort of lucky, you know. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, a couple of years later, after the initial uh, one and only Super League competition in ninety seven in in nineteen ninety nine, you make your first great debut for the North Queensland Cowboys. What what do you remember about your debut game? Mate, it was against the Warriors, who were ninety percent the Kiwis. <laughs> um, they were massive back yeah. then. Um, yeah, mate, it was, it was funny that year. Was out the back of Super League, the QRL wouldn't allow the Cowboys to have a reserve grade side, <clears throat> so they sent uh, about ten of us to the Cairns Cyclones that played in the Queensland Cup. Okay. Um, we were all 18, 19 year old kids, and um, just you can imagine being in Cairns in a tourist hotspot as an 18, 19 year old <laughs> through that period. Um, but, but yeah, we learned a lot, man, stack of good people, and then literally at the end of that year, um, yeah, managed to I me mean, debut was the third last round. Uh, we didn't win that game. Uh, they were such a big side. Um, still was picked to play the next week, and that was actually the West's, the last game that West played as West before okay, they yeah, merged. Yeah, yeah. 
I had my dad, he had about 10 of his mates out there as at Campbelltown. I actually got food poisoning the oh. night before the game and didn't get to play. Oh, no. And so Nick Patterson, uh, who was another young fella, he made his debut that day. Um, I yeah. think we won that game, actually. And, yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> it was an eye-opener Campbelltown <laughs> back then, a uh, bit supporting their own, you know, one team. But, uh yeah, you need to have thick skin. Let's put it that way. It, do, do you remember what you ate to get food poisoning at all? Mate, I, I don't know. No, I, I was and I was filthy because back then, you know, as a kid, you know, you don't have really any big contracts. So my bonus was match payments. You yeah, know, which, which was okay. big back in those days. So as a kid, mate, I, I was like, I was filthy because that was where you know, that was a really good income for one game. You know. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Well, you so, played two, two games the next year uh, for, for the Cowboys. I played uh, the and... very first one. You remember the, they brought in that rule where you, it was 17, but then you could have two interchanges, which was 18 and 19, that if someone come off, you could replace it. So oh, it was, yep. Yeah, so I was one of those. We played Penrith um, in Penrith. It was Nathan Fiend's debut as well. Um, okay. Good mate. He's at the Dragons now. Uh, not the Dragons, the Dolphins, Dolphins assistant. Yeah. He got sent off. He only played like the last 20 minutes. <laughs> he was so uh, wide. He, he literally in 10 minutes, he uh, put a coat hanger on um, the 5'8 back then with Carter yeah. and got sent. <laughs> so <laughs> it was, um, yeah, that, we didn't win that one either. But mate, as kids, you sort of, you, we only played 20 minutes, but the, the first two people to get dropped were the young kids. So yeah. that's uh, that's footy, unfortunately. Well, the coach back then was Tim Sheens, and we see it him was. Um, going around this year for the Tigers. Uh, what was Tim like as a coach for yourself? Mate, Tim was very skills-orientated, Sheensy. Um, you know, back then, we sort of got brought into that system. We were young, but... When that Super League, Ian Roberts was there, Steve Walters was there, you know, there's a lot of older, Tim Brasher um, had yeah. a great influence on the club. There's a lot of good people around there. I know a lot of them didn't play a lot through that sort of period, but I, I'm a, I'm, I was never a fan of the under-20s comp, you know, if, if, if I'm being totally honest. The, the reserve grade element I really liked because as yeah. kids, you sort of thought too early you, were, you probably made it when you had it. And, and through that era, you know, half your teammates were 100 first-grade gamers, you know. And yeah. so I really enjoy that. I don't think it'll ever get back to reserve grade. I'm not sure. I know the New South Wales Cup, which the Cowboys actually had a team in in 2001 and 2002. Yeah. Was, was I think it was the President's Cup maybe, but it was under 23s, but you could have four or five people that were older than that in okay. your team. Yeah. So as I, that's when I sort of started coming into grade and playing a lot more games. But that was that era. That was that period when Scotty Prince was just lighting it up, and and he was playing five eight. Uh, I played five eight for reserve grade, and sometimes my halfback was Noel Goldthorpe or yeah. Paul Green. Yeah. So you know, it made as a kid, you just it, it's so good knowing that you've got someone of that um, maturity, sort of helping you learn, I suppose. Yeah, for sure. You just mentioned Paul Green there. Unfortunately, we lost him last yeah. year. Um, what sort of an influence did he have on you around the club at, at that time that he was there? <clears throat> Mate, probably more like obviously when your players were all a little bit um, loose back in the day and we all had a little, you know, the game has changed so much, but probably more so when he was in Townsville as a coach. Like, when, okay. obviously, have much to do with him during that period as a player coach sort of relationship or anything like that. But from a business point of view, you know, Greeny was really close with some close friends of myself. Um, I'm close friends with Josh Henne through that era as well. And I know Josh, you know, spoke spoke and speaks so highly of Greeny through that period. Um, Josh got married last year. There was only a really small wedding of about 30 and um, – Greeny was supposed to be there, sadly, but um, yeah. and his wife is from where I'm from in the Burdick. Okay. You know, okay. so 
North Queensland, you're sort of only one degree of separation uh, up in that era. And, mate, it was very, very sad. I, I actually I didn't get to get to the funeral. I was in Ireland for, for business when it happened, but I heard it was a huge turnout. Um, his wife spoke amazingly at, at, at the funeral. And, um, yeah, mate, it's, you only sort of need to look at young kids. I'm a parent. Um, I'm not sure yeah. if yourself is, Troy. Yeah. You know, that that sort of stuff is heartbreaking when you when you see young kids involved and things like that. But uh, you know, you, to watch what the Sharks and Cowboys did a oh, month yeah. ago, um, my Nico Hines is you know you look at sort of leaders of our game. Um, you know, those kids will remember that forever. <laughs> what he sort of did, giving them the jersey and and the medal, and um, mate, yeah, I heard. Josh mentioned there was such a big turnout for the game as well through old players and teammates from both Cowboys and the Sharks. So, yeah, mate, commend both clubs on that. It was, yeah, really nice to watch. Yeah, no, for sure. We all miss uh, Paul Green. Obviously, he played at Parramatta as well uh, and the Broncos and the Sharks and the Cowboys. Um, so, yeah, we all, all miss him a, a lot as well in this rugby league community. Um, you sort of, a couple of years later, you sort of played 12 games. You sort of, Did you slowly get into the groove of, of playing first grade? You thought you sort of made it into first grade? Oh, I, I never probably thought I'd made it. I think the my main, you know, you're still young, you know, um, yeah. and that was that era. We, we made... I think we made we were one game off the grand final. No, actually, yeah, we were. We had a we had a standalone reserve grade semi final in Townsville at Dairy Farmer Stadium um, that had ten thousand people at it. Yeah, wow. Um, I think we played North, North um, that game, and uh, I think we won and we went into the grand final. But you know, it, it's that whole the, the system sort of changed so much now. Where back then it was you know, reserve grade and A grade. So you sort of, I, I say to a lot of kids and even via my time at the Cutters, I sort of reference it back to an apprenticeship, you know. Like okay, yeah, yeah. Anyone that, you know, wants to be a, a, a tradesman or anything like that, you, you do your time, you know. You, you you do your four years. Your first year, you're never doing any of the nice things. It's not fun. <laughs> no. But you, you, you earn people's respect, people... Um, you know, it's hard work and by your commitment of showing up all the time and, and having a great attitude, that's how you get rewarded. And so, and that's probably obviously what you did because you played more games that year. Yeah, played more games. Shinzi sort of then um, he got moved on and then when Graham Murray first got there, uh, Muzz, yeah, the late Graham Murray um, yeah. also. But, uh, mate, we seemed to get on really, really well and, uh, that's when I probably played my most, you know, I played, I think, 20 that year and then the next year, 22, which was the two years leading into when I come to para. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. I probably was just a bit more set. I, I never really – it wasn't until I finished more first grade when I finished with the Young Guns and playing in the Queensland Cup where I sort of was really a 5'8". Um even in first grade, I probably played like that, but it was a bit more in that lock style that they play today. Yeah. Um, that ball playing sort of lock. Um, so yeah, mate. No, it's uh, it, was, it was a good period. Um, but mate, I love my time at Para. Unfortunately, injuries were not good to me. Uh, that my year in Parramatta, and we didn't get to sort of agree. I had an option with Parramatta. And unfortunately, we didn't get to sort of negate or um, agree on that. To, yeah, to sort of see out my second year. What was the reasoning to coming to Parramatta in twenty oh four? Mate, I suppose something different. A change, uh, yeah, yeah, something different. Uh, I still had the opportunity to stay at um, at the Cowboys, but it was sort of like, mate, I'm from that region. Let's just, you know, go and see. You know what another club's like. Yeah. Um, how you know people train and see if I actually, you know, can make another NRL club, or, or rather than sort of be, you know, a North Queensland kid that um, is playing well, but 
it, you know, some might sort of suggest that, you know, that, that you couldn't play in another club or, or that yeah. sort of thing. So yeah. I'd, I always enjoyed a challenge and, you know, I think that's anyone in sport, if you're sort of told you can't do something, you want to prove people wrong. And, um, mate, I meet myself and Christy Market, who was at the Cowboys as well. We, um, we come down together. Was it tough being a, a young kid moving into state? No, mate. I, I actually, I, we we were in the not we weren't in the Bronx units. Um, we were in the one. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know the, uh, the Parramatta houses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we were sort of in the units a, a bit further down. The, they were pretty nice. There was a stack of us that were in there. Uh, Ash Graham was in there. Ryan Hinchcliffe was in there. Okay. Um, myself and. Uh, Luke O'Dwyer lived together initially. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then um, he sort of moved out with a, a partner and myself and Chris Thorman lived together, which was uh, a bit of an eye-opener. Okay. <laughs> but, well, why is that? Rock, Rocket, 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 Rocket Reddy lived in the building as well. So oh. man, it, was a good, it was a good little crew that we had um, in those units. But, yeah, he was, uh, he was a bit loose, old Chris. That, that probably would have been a real I I hope no with Rocket Ready living there or yeah, with yeah. him being a bit older and he tamed down a bit because I've heard some stories of his younger touring days. He was oh, bit... hey, mate, the some of the, he got one of the boys. Uh, with it. he was a G up King old Rocket. He was and he was good, <laughs> but he uh, he, his good one was he used to put powder on the fan. Put all powder on the fan, and then everyone would be there in for a meeting. And he'd go, "Oh, boys, I'll see you later." And as he'd leave, he'd turn the fan <laughs> full ball. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it was good. It was good. Uh, what was Coach Brian Smith like? I've heard from a lot of players they rate him as one of the best coaches he's had. Um, I could only assume that him and and Tim Sheens are sort of similar. In, in coaching styles, or are they completely different? No, I, I think it, they just thought about the game, you know, non-stop. Um, I see Smithy's young fellas doing really well. Um, he was only young when, when I was at Parramatta, but I, I, I think Smithy, well, well probably Sheensy first, and then sort of Smithy, where they, they're those sort of Warren Ryan style where they're, yeah. they're always thinking – you know, four or five steps ahead of how can I implement different things in training, in skill, in all of those things to, you know, try and get a bit of a an advantage, you know, through there. So there were some things that we were doing training and that that I'd never sort of seen, you know, in North Queensland and that. So that's another sort of good part about, you know, going to another club and, and stuff like that. I, I, mate, I still see... Uh, Craig Catterick here and there. He, oh, was yeah. The trainer. Yeah, yeah. So he was travelling a bit in North Queensland. I'd always run into Cat. Same with Hay- Hayden Knowles, who um, oh, was obviously a bloke. Yeah, good, good man, Knowlesy. So, mate, it was just a really good crew back through that era, um, which mate, most footy clubs are like that anyway. It's, um, yeah, you sort of, we're fortunate as players, even though you do move into state, you sort of go into a ready made network. Yeah. Um, and unless you're a, um, a DH, you generally fit in uh, pretty, pretty well. well. Yeah. Was 2004, was that the Jamie Lyon year where he left mid-season? Oh, mate, you, you asked me that <laughs> question now. I think no, it, was, I, it just, it, yeah. Mate, Hiller was a good lad, just a good country lad. Um, I'm going to say, I don't know, it might have been next year, I think. Okay. yeah. Okay. Might have been. Um, yeah, I, I, mate, I'm not. I'm not too sure on that one, but uh, yeah, it was. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, well, well, who were some of the other players that uh, you really got along with at Parramatta? Mate, I got, well, well, they were all good lads, you know. Hindy and Kalis were sort of the leaders of our sort of group. Um, good lads. I, I used to hang out with Eric Growth a lot. I, oh um, yes. Mate, I'm coming from North Queensland, you know, when you say I'll see you in five minutes, <laughs> mate, five minutes is five minutes for me. <laughs> and I, I just sort of couldn't comprehend. They Like him, Dykesy, some of these blokes were living in Cronulla and then would commute every day to training. And I was like, yeah. mate, I, yeah, 
from travelling five minutes in traffic was doing my head in in Sydney, let alone two hours. Uh, but yeah, during pre-season, I'd go and stay with Guru and his old man. Um, Matty Peterson lived in Glebe as well, so I generally went to the spots that were closer to the spots. Yeah, yeah. Um, nice. Wags was always sort of around where uh, with Guru and that sort of stuff. So got to meet Dave Gleeson through Wags. He was pretty good. Oh, friend. really? So, yeah, yeah. They, okay. they used to- Used to sing at a at a at a be- at a pub in somewhere around St George or Cogra there uh, most Sundays, and yeah. we'd end up there and I belted a few uh, songs out after a few beers with uh, <laughs> with Gleason. It was fun. Is there any uh, funny Gleason Dave Gleason stories you no, can tell me? No, no. unfortunately, no. <laughs> I'm, he could probably tell more about me. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Been a, yeah, rock star, I guess. So, uh, so, yeah, a lot of them lived over there. Other than that sort of crew, there's a few that were in the Bronx. Old uh, Fooey, Fooey Moy Fooey. Moy. <laughs> what was <laughs> Fooey like? Mate, Fooey was good. He's just a jokester and a prankster. And um, we always used to joke it was Fooey, Fooey Moy Moy from uh, whose favourite uh, food was bok choy. <laughs> yeah. Did, did he ever steal your thongs? No, not mine, because mine would never fit his feet. <laughs> so, <laughs> fair enough. Well, I've heard that he uh, did that as a joke, uh, was yeah. taking around people's thongs. Nah, so, cheap no, it, was good, it was such a good group. Um, yeah, we, we we fit in really well and pretty quickly, and, yeah, no, I enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. Was the fact that, you didn't take up the option because of injuries or the club didn't take up the option. Was that the reason to go back to North Queensland? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm from there. So, mate, I, I had a um, – I think it was like the last week before our – the first comp game and I actually got ambulance off training. I hurt me, did my mm-hmm. neck. Um, yeah. It was in a in a, an oppose or, or a physical session and – we all had the suits on and um, I sort of swung around the tackle and big Corey Pearson just sort of hit me head sort of back into my neck. Okay. And the neurosurgeon didn't let me play for about six weeks. Um, then sort of come back through reserve grade. Um, we beat Manly on a, in a TV game. That I, that was my first game and I broke my hand. Oh, I and I was, out for, I was out for like 10 weeks. So we end up, yeah, didn't play um, a lot of first grade after that, um, which was, yeah, it was a shame. I was, you know, when you go to a new club, you want to impress and and just do what you can to try and yeah. be inside. But unfortunately, yeah, injuries um, weren't great that year. So, just how concerning uh, injury was that a neck injury? Like, what were you thinking at that time? Like. I mean, mate. Again, after a week, I thought I was ready to go. Like, okay. Yeah. Physically, I was fine at the time. You know, it's sort of that tingle back in your neck. Um, one. Yeah. But like a week later, if if the neurosurgeon said I could play, I would have played. But yeah, mate, he, he was like, "You're not playing." So yeah, yeah. Was um, there ever a yeah. concern when you did return of of uh, re-injuring it, or were you no. thought, thoughtful of it at all? Or? No, I was pretty fine, mate. No, I was, I was too dumb to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, nah. Well, when you did get back up to North Queensland, you got to play uh, uh, five eights with um, Jonathan Thurston as half as your halfback. I did, yeah, a couple of games in, there in the yeah. halves. There, what what was that experience like, mate? It was good. It was, it was it, uh, Muzz sort of brought me in because I was. Uh, you know, pretty good talker and organiser. So through that period, although I was six, I probably played a bit more as a seven, closer to the ruck, so JT could be a little bit wider off the ruck. Um, yeah. And that was through that era. JT was, you know, mate, he was killing it. And, yeah, so, mate, I love I wish, uh, I wish I got to play sort of more through that period. But, um, mate, it wasn't to be, you know, when I sort of got back, yeah, you know, I was um, I didn't get to play as much first grade as I would have liked, but you know that w- the first grade team was going well at the same time. We ended up winning the comp that year for Young Guns, um, which we had such a, a good side. We had over three hundred NRL games in that team, you know, and 
two blokes in that that are pretty well known. Matt Scott and Gavin Cooper were both nineteen and twenty year olds. You know. Yeah. Wow. So it was. Um, yeah, we won. That was our first Q Cup. We won like sixteen in a row to the yeah to the grand final. Yeah. Wow. Well, at that young age, could you see the potential in those two? Of what they could be at that young age, or mate, Matt, yeah, Matty Scott was just always, you know, he loved the tough stuff, um, didn't shy away from, you know, the hard work. So you, you know, he, he might have been eighteen and Coops was nineteen. I, I don't know what the difference yeah. was, but but you know, you think of, you know, New South Wales Cup, Queensland Cup, twenty years ago, ten to twenty years ago, like it was a physical game yeah. back where where both of those sort of competitions are a lot younger now. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, mate, to be playing Q Cup as an 18-year-old, it's... Uh, You've got to be tough. You, yeah, you're pretty destined to, to be playing first grade. Um, and Coops was... Coops obviously wasn't playing outside anyone like Jonathan Thurston through that period, but, um, you know, he always had such a great um, game sense and awareness, yeah. Coops, so... Then you sort of step up a notch when JT's sort of drifting along and and or, or putting it on a dime for you. As long as you put yourself in the right spot, you put yourself in the right spot. You know, he yeah. went through that, that period where he was the most tries for a forward or something sort of crazy. So yeah, so yeah, no, mate. It's um, I suppose Coops had to go away. I'm still really close with with Coops and. A few of those guys, but he, he sort of went away to the Gold Coast and Penrith yeah. before he come back to the Cowboys. And I think that really matured Coops for that second stint at the Cowboys because he was there early as a young kid and then That's right. played his debut at the Titans even, um, maybe. Or it might have been Cowboys, but then he sort of left that year. Yeah. So, um, mate, sometimes they say, you know, you've sort of got to go away and find yourself or – Mature a bit, and and then that era through, you know, him and JT and Luke O'Donnell and like the, the team we had. How we only won one comp is sort of just goes to show you how hard it is to win. To win. You know, you, you, uh, you, I'm, I actually was so rooting for the Parramatta Eels last year because <laughs> I'm sick of hearing how long it's been. You know, but <laughs> people just don't appreciate. It. Actually, how hard it is to win the comp. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I don't think anyone was beating Penrith last year in that grand final. Gee, they, they just blew power off the park in that first 30 minutes. Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, they were very hard to beat last year. And as you said, when we beat them twice during the year, but uh, finals football is a different thing and, and grand yeah. finals a different thing. They had the experience of playing in grand finals and, um, yeah, as you said, they blew us away in the first 20 minutes and um, after that it was just, yeah, sort of game over. We came back a little bit in the end, but... It was like the one, you know, the year they the boys lost to Newcastle. Like, that if you're just chasing your tail for the rest of the game, you know, you don't get to play how you want to because you, you sort of got to chance your arm a bit. But which they still nearly won that, um, which was a cracking comeback. But the noise just went bang, 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 and they all yeah. you know, look at the clock and it's 20 minutes in and it's 24 nil. Yeah, I still haven't watched the replay of that game. <laughs> kills Mate, me. I've never, I've never, even our grand final that we won Q Cup, I've never watched that game. Yeah. Uh, again, no. I, in, I've seen highlights here and there, but I suppose when you're in it, that's that's your memory, um, and yeah. that's that's the memory, good or bad, for a lot of blokes. But I reckon if you asked every person that's played NRL ever, that you know, you either bundle out in the first, you know, don't even make finals or yeah. play in a grand final and lose, I reckon I know the answer. Yeah. 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 You'd rather be there on the day and experience, oh, know, for sure, and all the rest of it. And so, mate, they were there. But they were there. Yeah. <clears> hopefully, <throat> they the can. Pedal was just a little bit high. That's it. That's it. Hopefully, we can get there again. Not looking too good this year, but uh, it's not over yet. So. Mate,